Hey guys, Rhett here at a client's property. Mike, really, really excited for you. Guys, this is Mike's second property. It's gonna be his second Section 8 rental in just a matter of months. Now, Mike has this property under contract for 70,000. It needs about 17,000 in rehab. We're gonna walk through, we're gonna talk about what it needs, why it needs it, and why this is gonna be a great rental. I think that as a three bedroom right in this area, we're in a great little area. This home is gonna rent for somewhere between 1100 and 1250 a month, which will be amazing if we could be all in on it for under 90,000. To get that kind of return is just crazy. So let's walk through and, and we'll talk a little bit about what it needs and why. So guys, needs a lot of woodwork, um, needs a lot of woodwork, needs some paint work, needs some touch-ups, needs some small things. Those are all dead bugs, pretty disgusting. Needs to definitely be cleaned and, and uh, work through some of that stuff. So guys, come on in. So here we are in the living room. Now, all this flooring's bad. It's got real bad water damage throughout the whole thing. It's damaged. Um, we're gonna put down all new carpets throughout this entire house. Now, one of the biggest issues in this house is the fact that the subfloors are in terrible, terrible shape, okay? Really, really bad shape to the point where they're dangerous. So we're gonna have to cut the, cut the flooring out and we'll, we'll show you where and why, but we're gonna have to cut the flooring out in multiple areas of this house. Um, we're gonna have to resupport the subfloors, put new subfloor in, redo joists, bring the house up a little bit higher because of the sloping and because of the holes. Now, with that being said, the house does not need paint. It's in, it's in nice shape, it looks good, it's got a fresh paint job. It needs all new um, electrical um, fixtures, light fixtures. It does need electrical throughout the entire house as well and plumbing too. So coming through here guys, we have our living room and we have a nice big den room off of the living room. So a really good size right here where you have some, some good family space. Coming off of this living room, we have bedroom number one, okay? Bedroom number one, good size. We have our closet, we have our windows. Multiple windows in this house need to be fixed. So there's not a lot of operational windows in here. That's something we absolutely have to do. Walking through bedroom number one, you take a quick turn into bedroom number two. Now, bedroom number two, same thing guys, bad wood, the hallway bad wood. We have bad pieces of wood, dirty wood. It's all bad. Every single outlet in this entire house is not usable. Everything's been painted over. So every single outlet has been painted over. We can't use them. They're all beat, they don't work. We can't even get our tester in most of them to tell if they're grounded or not, okay? We have our closet here, and then we have bedroom number three. So bedroom number three, step down. We'll have to build another step in here to make sure that we can come off of that okay. Uh, we have two closets here and we have our windows. So we have our bedroom, we have to make these windows work because most of them also do not, they're in bad shape as well. So guys, coming back up through bedroom number two, we're gonna walk into this little hallway here and we have our bathroom. Okay, it's a good size bathroom. You might be able to tell from this picture how bad the flooring is here. It might be doable depending on what's underneath it. We're gonna see and see what kind of shape it, it's in underneath. Um, so we might end up keeping that. It depends on the structural durability of it. It doesn't look great, but structurally it's fine. It's got a new HVAC system. We have to put a cage on it. We don't want it getting stolen while we're in the closing process of this, okay? Now here is one of our main issues of the entire house. So this floor is borderline dangerous and what this kind of flooring can do is cover up a lot of significant issues. Whenever we put vinyl flooring down like this, okay, and it's sheet vinyl, whenever we do that, what we do is we tear it up, okay, and we get to the subfloor. We put a brand new subfloor in to make sure it's flat and make sure it's strong. A lot of these people that sell these homes don't do that. There's issues with the floor, so they throw the stuff down so it looks good. But the reality is in so many areas, and they're everywhere, I have one right here under my foot here. So, and I, I just don't know if I can do, I can't even do this justice, but there are holes 
that are that are extremely sizable that that are extremely dangerous and it's the rot is so bad underneath where you're you, you, I mean, if I step on this too hard, I, I seriously, if I put, slam my foot down, I might go through it. So we have to take this whole thing up. We're gonna put a brand new subfloor in here. We're gonna basically redo this. What I'm afraid of is there is so much sloping in this kitchen, primarily over here. I'm very, very concerned because I've done this so many times and I think I know exactly what's wrong, is the joists in here are bad. What happens when the joists rot, the ceiling, the, the floor caves, your subfloor cracks, your subfloor breaks, pieces fall, they break, um, and we have to go in, take it all up, resupport the floor, uh, <clears throat> put new pieces of cross wood, rebuild the floor on top of those, but um, we're gonna have to get into it to see what it really needs. Now, one of the biggest issues I have over and over and over, which I'm gonna see until the day that I die, is this, and, and this is why, we run into electrical issues at every single house that we do, okay? You have people that paint over trim, you paint over a three-prong outlet like this, right? So what we have to do is we have to take that outlet off, we gotta replace the whole thing, make sure it's grounded because that's a three-prong in the first place and just redo everything in these houses. So they might look good, but when you say, wow, 17,000, it sounds like a lot of rehab. It, it really isn't. When you actually start looking at each individual thing in here, you say, wow, that's, that's broken and busted, that needs to be fixed, all oh, that needs to be fixed. You're like, holy cow, that's a lot of stuff that needs to be fixed. And that's something that pictures and Zillow and realtor.com and all these websites and wholesalers and, and Facebook groups, they'll never show you what it really is like. And that's why guys, it's so, so, so important to have a team on the ground that does this and does this all the time to know what to look for. Because the only thing worse than having someone go into a property and, 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 and saying, yeah, it looks great, you're good to go, and then you get in it and it turns out it needs a ton of work, is having someone give you a rehab quote and then you do the rehab and then it's still not even close to where it needs to be, right? So it's so important that when we go through these the first time, we find every little tiny thing that's wrong with them so we can take care of everything up front and take care of it the right way. Okay, guys, if you want to use my team for that sort of thing and you want to use me and work with me, shoot me an email in the description below. We'll get started. Let's get this thing going. Any questions or comments that you guys have, please leave them below and I'll get to all of them. We'll see you next time.